In discussing the large-scale structure of the cosmos, astronomers sometimes say that space is curved, or that the universe is uh, finite but unbounded. Whatever are they talking about? Let's imagine that we are perfectly flat. I mean absolutely flat, and that we live, appropriately enough, in a flatland, a land designed and named by Edwin Abbott, a Shakespearean scholar who lived in Victorian England. Everybody in flatland is, of course, exceptionally flat. We have squares, circles, and triangles, and we all scurry about, and we can go into our houses and do our flat business. Now, we have width and length, but no height at all. Now, these little cutouts have some little height, but uh, let's ignore that. Let's imagine that these are absolutely flat. That being the case, we know, us flatlanders, about left, right, and we know about forward, back, but we have never heard of up, down. Let us imagine that into flatland, hovering above it, comes a strange three-dimensional creature which, oddly enough, looks like an apple. And the three-dimensional creature sees uh, an attractive, congenial-looking square, watches it enter its house, and decides in a gesture of interdimensional amity to say hello. Hello, says the three-dimensional creature. How are you? I am a visitor from the third dimension. Well, the poor square looks around his closed house, sees no one there, and what's more, has witnessed a greeting coming from his insides, a voice from within. He surely is getting a little worried about his sanity. The three-dimensional creature is unhappy about being considered a psychological aberration, and so he descends to actually enter Flatland. Now, a three-dimensional creature exists in Flatland only partially, only a plane, a cross-section through him can be seen. So when the three-dimensional creature first reaches Flatland, it's only the points of contact which can be seen, and we'll represent that by stamping the apple in this ink pad and placing that image in Flatland. And as the apple were to descend through, slither by Flatland, we would progressively see higher and higher slices, which we can represent by cutting the apple. So the square, as time goes on, sees a set of objects mysteriously appear from nowhere and inside a closed room and change their shape dramatically. His only conclusion could be that he's gone bonkers. Well, the apple might be a little annoyed at this conclusion, and so not such a friendly gesture from dimension to dimension, makes a contact with the square from below and sends our flat creature fluttering and spinning above flatland. At first, the square has no idea of what's happening. He's terribly confused. This is utterly outside his experience. But after a while, he comes to realize that he is seeing inside closed rooms in Flatland. He is looking inside his fellow flat creatures. He is seeing Flatland from a perspective no one has ever seen it before to his knowledge. Getting into another dimension provides as an incidental benefit a kind of X-ray vision. Now our flat creature slowly descends to the surface and his friends rush up to see him. From their point of view, he has mysteriously appeared from nowhere. He hasn't walked from somewhere else. He's come from some other place. They say, for heaven's sake, what's happened to you? And the poor square has to say, well, I was in some other mystic dimension called up. And they will pat him on his side and comfort him, or else they'll ask, well, show us. Where is that three dimen third dimension? Point to it and the poor square will be unable to comply. But maybe more interesting is the other direction in dimensionality. What about the fourth dimension?
Now, to approach that, let's consider a cube. We can imagine a cube in the following way. You take a line segment and move it at right angles to itself an equal length. That makes a square. Move that square an equal length at right angles to itself, and you have a cube. Now, this cube, we understand, um, casts a shadow. And that shadow, we recognize. It's, you know, ordinarily drawn in uh, third grade classrooms as two squares with their vertices connected. Now, if we look at the shadow of a three-dimensional object in two dimensions, we see that, in this case, not all the lines appear equal. Not all the angles are right angles. The three-dimensional object has not been perfectly represented in its projection in two dimensions, but that's part of the cost of losing a dimension in the projection. Now, let's take this three-dimensional cube and project it, carry it, through a fourth physical dimension. Not that way, not that way, not that way, but at right angles to those three directions. I can't show you what direction that is, but imagine that there is a fourth physical dimension. In that case, we would generate a four-dimensional hypercube, which is also called a tesseract. I cannot show you a tesseract because I and you are trapped in three dimensions. But what I can show you is the shadow in three dimensions of a four-dimensional hypercube or tesseract. This is it. And you can see it's two nested cubes, all the vertices connected by lines. And now the real tesseract in four dimensions would have all the lines of equal length and all the angles right angles. That's not what we see here, but that's the penalty of projection. So you see, while we cannot imagine the world of four dimensions, we can certainly think about it perfectly well. Now, imagine a universe just like Flatland, truly two-dimensional, and entirely flat in every direction, but with one exception. Unbeknownst to the inhabitants, their two-dimensional universe is curved into a third physical dimension, maybe into a sphere, but at any rate, into something entirely outside their experience. Locally, their universe still looks flat enough, but if one of them much smaller and flatter than me, takes a very long walk along what seems to be a straight line, he would uncover a great mystery. Suppose he marked his starting point here and set off to explore his universe. He never turns around and he never reaches an edge. He doesn't know that his apparently flat universe is actually curved into an enormous sphere. He doesn't sense that he's walking around a globe. Why should his space be curved? Because there's so much matter in this universe that it gravitationally warps space, closing it back on itself into a sphere. But our flatlander doesn't know this. After a long while, you'll find he somehow returns to his starting point. There must be a third dimension. Our flatlander couldn't imagine a third dimension, but he could sure deduce it. Now, increase all the dimensions in this story by one, and you have something like the situation which many cosmologists think may actually apply to us. We are three-dimensional creatures trapped in three dimensions. We imagine our universe to be flat in three dimensions, but maybe it's curved into a fourth. We can talk about a fourth physical dimension, but we can't experience it. No one can point to the fourth dimension. I mean, there's left, right, and there's forward, back, there's up, down, and uh, there's uh, some other direction simultaneously at right angles to those familiar three dimensions. Now, imagine this universe is expanding. If we blow it up like a four-dimensional balloon, what happens? An astronomer on a given galaxy thinks all the other galaxies are running away from him. The more distant the galaxy, the faster it seems to be moving. This is just what Hummison and Hubble found. On the surface of this curved universe, there is no boundary or center. 
the universe can be both finite and unbounded. The red shift of the distant galaxies seemed to imply to Humason's contemporaries that we were at the center of an expanding universe, that our place in space was somehow privileged. But if the universe is expanding, whether or not it's curved into a fourth dimension, observers on every galaxy will see precisely the same thing. All the galaxies rushing away from them as if they had made some dreadful intergalactic social blunder. If there's enough matter to close the universe gravitationally, then it's wrapped in on itself like a sphere. If there isn't enough matter to close the cosmos, then our universe has an open shape extending forever in all directions. This saddle universe is only one of an infinite number of possible kinds of open universes. Unlike such closed universes as the sphere, open universes have in them an infinite amount of space. If our universe is in fact closed off, then nothing can get out, not matter, not light. We would then be living inside a black hole. There is one possible way out though, a hypothetical tunnel or wormhole through the next higher dimension, a place sucking in matter and light. Can we find such a wormhole? Could we survive the trip? We might emerge in some other place in time, perhaps in another universe, or perhaps somewhere else in our own. If you want to know what it's like inside a black hole, look around.